I'm going to talk to you today about the input box in Maya. This little area up here. And if you can't see it, it could be that you need to click this little line with the arrow as it's been collapsed. And you'll see it as a square with lines through it, X, Y, and Z. But also if you click on the icon, you can actually change this to be four different things. So I'm gonna talk about each of them and hopefully you'll learn something from today. So the absolute transform allows you to grab an object and by default it's translating. I can type in values in here and it's going to override whatever my object's translate values are and immediately set it back to the origin. Now, this still works even if your object's already got frozen translation. So technically, this teapot is saying it's sitting at x, y, and z, zero. But if I type in x, y, and z, zero and then hit enter, it's going to take it back to the origin. So this is using world values. It doesn't care what values are on your object. So this is what I use it for mostly is zeroing out objects, even if their transforms have been frozen. You can also use it with the rotate and scale tools, although I find this a little bit buggy sometimes. I feel like you have to actually have selected the scaling and then click on the scale tool to switch it to that. But then you can set it to one and it's going to scale down to one and again works even if your objects same with the rotate you're going to have to click on maybe the outer one and make sure it says rotate at the bottom when you click it and then you can zero out the rotations as well i don't often use it for the rotate and scale but you might find a use for it the next one down is relative transform so this still keeps your x y z values but it instead it doesn't override it with world values it says right you're adding 10 to this so i am just going to add 10 to it in x and so again it's a good way if you know you want to be precise and move something as pre precise distance i don't often use it because i instead would use my plus equals 10 in my channel box that's just the way that i prefer to do it um but you can do that in there, negative or positive. And again, it works with the translate, rotate and scale. The next one down is the rename. So you can select as many objects as you want and then you can rename them. So let's just call this group cat instead and see what happens. I hit enter and it's automatically renamed everything to group underscore cat and then any ones after the initial one, it's added values one, two and three, two. So pretty straightforward. And then the last one is select by name. This one I really love using. Um, you can come in here and I can select group underscore cat, which is what we've just renamed it to. And if I hit enter, it's gone and selected the object with that exact name and this is why you need to use your asterisks as wildcard and then it becomes even more useful so if i wanted to grab everything that was called group cat i would type group underscore cat asterisk and hit enter and now it has selected everything that's called group underscore cat so if I wanted to select my cubes, but I wasn't sure what they were all called, except I knew they all had the word cube in them, then you would put wildcard, cube, wildcard, and I would hit it, and it's going to select all my cubes. It is case sensitive, so that's why when I name anything, I always just completely use lowercase so I don't have to remember. But it's really handy. It is a little bit similar to the outliner. So you can use wildcards and things in the outliner. 